wonder how, how I sound, too. Well, we're going to be staring at a blank screen until my uh, PC picks up that I'm actually streaming. Nice, nice. It's backwards, though. Um, yeah, 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 okay, you can hear me 100% better. Um, let me just, um... Okay. What do you mean I didn't fix it? Uh, this always fixes it. Uh. Alright, there we go. <laughs> well, the one time it, it didn't fix it. Now it's not even saying I'm live. I hate my PC sometimes. There we go. PC be hot garbage. Whenever, whenever I try to do anything. Alright, I need to plug my phone in at the same time, so this is going to be so fun. <clears throat> right, at least you don't have to deal with hearing the fan. Because I managed to do things differently. Come on, straighten out the camera. Ah, wrong way. Oh, shoot. Alright, um... Oh, that's that's too sideways. I'm sorry, I'm bad. I'm bad at angling this camera. My phone. I can't wait till I get a stand. Not not a stand, but an actual webcam to just make this easier and this will look much more crisp and Gucci gang. Um. So let's find. So oh, it's so cold in this room. Um. Find some some chill beats to listen to. Beats. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll just click on this one. Alright. Okay. I'm sure I have my the right pen. Oh, I like this pen better. And then, um, uh, oh, I don't want to yank my phone too bad if I. Keep, I'm gonna keep forgetting I have my headset actually plugged into this, so I might yank the phone occasionally. Which is not gonna be good. But, um, make sure this thing works. Oh, this pen's working. Okay. So. Let me get. Oh no, oh no, hold on. The. the, the <laughs> forgot to grab my printer paper. It's all the way over. Okay, I am back now with the printer paper because <laughs> I forgot to grab it first. And this really crappy cord that plugs into this that's not meant for this. Um, okay, so I already know this printer paper is um, too small for this whole drawing. Of course, but if I can get majority of this, and especially this side, because this is where more of the scenery is than on that side. And then I just need to clip, clip in place. Alright. That is a bad clip placement because this paper is off the edge, actually. Move it up more towards the top. So I get a full clip on it. Up a little more. Okay, catch the edge. Hold and then clip. Just move the paper again. <clears throat> so I have issues moving the, uh, the paper a lot. Which is fantastic. Oh, hello, Fox! You can actually hear me now. Which is great. Uh, this cord's dangling. Okay, there we go. Yes, it is much easier to hear me now because I plugged in my headset. How is the music though? Is it is it loud enough? Is it okay? Can you hear it? Because I'm down. I must to know. I gotta. Look at this chair is not positioned right. There we go. Bye. Okay. Oh, where to start on this one? So much grit on the paper. 
Okay. Say hi hi. Hi hi. Alright. We'll start. I guess we can just start at the bottom of the uh, clothes here. Now, well, we are. I can kind of hear it, but I'm the I'm not the best test because I don't have a headset in. <laughs> That's fine. I'll just turn it up in general. My my headset has ambient sound controls on it, so like everything I hear is louder than it normally is in general because I'm deaf AF. But we're going to be. This is a scene from a manga slash anime called Bloom Into You. It is a Yuri slice of life romance where these two are the main characters. The girl over here struggles with. They both struggle with um, love and their feelings. And the uh, older girl is falling for the younger girl but tells her, hey, you're not allowed to love me back as a condition of being together. But of course, you know, she, the younger girl can't help but also learn to fall in love with her. And whatnot. And basically this series is about, you know, their struggles and whatnot and how they overcome and, you know, better express their feelings. Now, there are, I have all eight volumes. There are eight volumes in the series. And um that you know, that was the final one, so it, it ends. The the ending to it is like it's very lackluster. It's not what I would have liked in sense, but it's still a good ending that is. The only thing I didn't like is that the anime decides to cut off at, like, volume, um, six and a half. It cuts off in the middle of it. And there won't be a season two, actually, for this uh, anime. So you don't actually get to, like, see it animated onto what happens. But, I mean, at least the manga ended, so you can still get the rest of your story from, from that. Um... I don't remember the characters' names at all. I, I really don't. Uh, this is like one of the first animes that I did watch. And I just, I just don't remember anything besides the plotline story, and I really loved it. And then I got hooked into Yuri Slice of Life Romance. It, yeah, it was very weird that it cut off. Um, I think it was... Um, I think I think they managed to get twelve episodes out of it. Um, let me let me recheck because I want to make sure that I'm I'm right on this. I still have yet to like buy the collection of it, but people sell the collection for like a hundred plus dollars. Like it's expensive. Um, uh, yeah. Let me let me check real quick. So if I go into the anime, there were. Yeah, there were a full 13 episodes of it, and they just cut off in the middle of it for some reason. And I was just like, well, they could do a season two, but then they just didn't. But, like, they made, like, an IRL, like, stage play of this manga, though. Like, they, they like, had that done and everything in Japan and whatnot. And then there was going to be a second one that they were adapting, um, into ones regarding, uh... Sakai Sayaka, who is one of the characters. But... I- I think... I think regarding, uh, Sayaka is supposed to be a technical second spin-off series? Um, not 100%. I kinda wanna know, cause I know I've looked this up before, but I just don't remember. Um... Yeah, so it's a story from the other person's, like, uh... point of view, but... I think they only have it as a light novel, though, and I can't read light novels at all, because dyslexia says no a lot more with those. But, yeah, and it's in only Japanese, I think. Well, I can check the English version. They ha No, they do have it in, like, in English, but, like, yeah, it's only a light novel, and I'm just like, I'm not doing that. So yeah, it's it, it just made no sense as to uh, why why it did that. You know, I I think it was because they wanted to uh, to get a season two out there and whatnot, and that would have been nice. But I don't think they had enough um, funding for that. 
and that the show didn't, like, do, like, the best that they wanted to on ratings in the first place. But I felt like, you know, it, could, it just could have been very nice. Um, I've noticed a lot of anime that I actually watch, a lot of them don't get season twos at all. Like, they're the really good ones I really like, and I look it up and everything, and they're just like, yeah, they're not getting a season two. Like, uh, Cat Planet Cuties was a really nice anime also. It's like these alien, uh, cat girls, you know, come from space and whatnot, and there's this guy. It's... I don't remember the whole storyline. It's not exactly harem-esque, but you can see how it could lead into a harem type of thing, but it doesn't. And it was it was a really nice one also. I don't know. Just all the good anime I like. Just doesn't have season two. It's like Absolute Duo doesn't have a season two at all. Uh, it's just not. I've got a whole list of ones. I can't remember if Monster Mezume was getting a season two or not. Or if they were, or if they had to go for season three, I couldn't remember. I know I liked that one a lot. That one was really a uh, was a really nice one. I still need to actually finish Fairy Tail. Fairy Tail was the first ever one I started, but it's just kind of the anime itself is kind of lackluster with the fact that a bunch of the. Uh, Fight scenes are generally more or less just the same thing. And I'm just like, oh, they're using forbidden magic. Oh, now we'll do this. Oh, we've been defeated. No, the power of friendship. We'll get through it. I feel it. I'm like, yeah, kind of kind of lackluster, though. I mean, if that's how every fight goes. I mean, he's not like the biggest point into, uh, into watching it over and over again. But uh, my policy is that if I start an anime... Even if I don't like it, I'm gonna finish it. So I'm just like, well, I might as well just do it. Plus, Fairy Tail has an absurd amount of episodes. I even ha I even have the emblem as a tattoo. Like, <laughs> I used to be really big into it. Um, Gray and Juvia were my favorite characters, obviously. And then, uh, Lucy was a top-tier character, and so was, um, Urza. I didn't really care for Natsu a whole lot as a character. Yajiel was pretty cool. Um, is it Jalil or Jalal? I think his name is pronounced Jalal. He's just, I don't understand the whole Jalal thing in it. Because, like, there's one of him, and then he dies, but there's a second person who looks just like him, but it's actually him. And I'm just like, who, 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 what? It makes no sense. I know at some point they, they go over it, but I don't think I've gotten to that point. And there was a whole season that was technically, that was just filler. And I'm just like, why would you make a whole season that's just filler content? Like, it wasn't bad filler content, but like, why would you want to do that? I mean, probably to build yourself some time to come up with how to progress the story further, but I mean, I mean, it wasn't horrible, it's just, it wasn't really needed. Um, what are the really good ones have I watched? The Promised Neverland. Um, oh jeez, I just started, my table started messing up again. Um, The Promised Neverland was a really nice one. I've heard a lot of people say season two is awful, though, like, it deviates from the original story path so bad, and the story, the story plot of season two is just awful. And from what I've heard about it, like people talking about some of the scenes that weren't spoilers, I was just like, I can really see that because the way that they've described it and how some scenes work in it, I'm just like, that. Why is that even in the? Why is that even in the anime? It makes no sense why they would do that. Did you watch both seasons? I just, I just know apparently the second season was garbage. <laughs> I see a little drop of water just got on my fucking paper. That's fine. It'll get colored over. I don't know how. I don't have any water up here. Okay. Just the first one? Oh. I just know a lot of people say the second season was very bad. 
But I mean, I'll probably end up watching it anyways, because I'm like, well, I want to know what happens regardless for the story. And then, uh, Food Wars. I really liked Food Wars. That was a really, uh, nice one. Um, I know a lot of people have said that during Season 3 and the arcs, it really just kind of dropped off of, like, what the main story was. And I'm like, yeah, I can see that, but it's still interesting to watch. I mainly watch it for the, uh, not, not just for, like, the comedy aspect, but obviously I ship some of the characters together. And then, like, the food that they make honestly looks good. And I know I follow a Reddit page and group where all the people doing it is just make food from Food Wars. And I'm just like, wow, this stuff looks really tasty. I'm too lazy to make it. I'm just like, yeah, it's nice. And I know a lot of people said the, uh, the fourth plate, which is season four, was just awful in all senses. I'm trying to remember what this scene was exactly. I know that I can't remember if they kiss or not in this scene, and I'm just like, I need to know. I might end up rewatching this um this anime. I usually don't rewatch anime because I'm just like I've seen it. I know what happens. What's the point? But that's kind of like so that's kind of like Love Live. Watching Love Live, the Love Live series, they are literally all the exact same thing, just different characters and aspects. But I'm just like, but it's so good. I still have to watch the new season, which is not Najisaki. Um, so I've seen School Idol Project. I've seen Sunshine. I've seen all the OVAs and the movies they had in between. The only movie I haven't seen is the uh, Sunshine Over the Rainbow movie for it. Which I need to buy, because you can only buy that. They only made uh, digital copies of it. And then I need to watch the Najisaki series. Um, I need to find out where I can watch that at. So then I can completely watch them. Um, I don't have any of the manga. Like, I usually like to read the manga before I watch the anime. But there are some of them where I'm just like, you know what? I might as well just uh, watch it beforehand. Which I've done with quite a bit. And then I'm like, I'm going to buy the manga after. Like, Full Metal Panic is a Mecha Gundam-like uh, anime. And I, I really enjoyed it. And I had a hard time finding the manga for it. They have nine volumes for the manga. And people online, they're not in print anymore, actually. So people online try to sell them for, like, anywhere between $45 and $150 per one volume. And I'm just like, what the hell? No one's gonna pay that. I mean, if someone's diehard really wants it, they will. But I was able to, with the help of Sauce, I was able to actually find three of the volumes I really needed. I managed to get all nine volumes for roughly $60, which is a steal considering usually one volume of manga is like $13 plus dollars, depending on um, uh, who the publisher is. And since they're especially not in print anymore, it made it a lot better feeling that I was able to um, obtain them. Um, I have to wait a hell of a long time for shipping, though, because they're from, uh, they're from like, thrift bookstores. So... Um, they obviously are going to take a while to get those out and whatnot. But I'm just like, hey, at least I can get them. I need to move this clip all the way down here. And then, I, I don't know if I'm actually going to read them. Because the, um, the, the manga and the anime for Full Metal Panic, uh, they actually follow each other to a T. So, they're the exact same thing. I know there is a second series for the manga called uh, Full Metal Panic Overload, which is in English, which uh, I think yeah, I can obtain that one easier because I think I've seen that one more often than not. But I don't think that one was developed into an anime. And I know there's like four other series for Full Metal Panic, but those ones are only in Japanese. And I'm like, as much as those would look nice just to have in a collection, to have full of all of them, I, I'd rather not collect the uh, Japanese versions of once to complete collections 
for the sole fact that, yes, I could look at it and tell what's happening, but I'm not going to be able to read it, and that's what I like to do, is to read them. And then, the, I do have, like, a conflicting issue with, with uh, deluxe edition mangas, like uh, an omnibus which has multiple volumes in one. Like, for, for, say, Berserk, I have been buying Berserk Deluxe Editions, which have three volumes per one, leather-bound books and everything, and have the original colored cover art on the back of them. I have five of them. And, um, I know for the original paperback single volumes, I think there's at least 40 or so. And I'm just like, okay, I have the Deluxe Editions that I've been collecting, but, like, I also want the original ones, that are just the single volumes. I'm like, that's so much money I'm using, and I'm not even going to read the single volumes, considering I have the deluxe editions, so I know what happens regardless. I just, I just want to collect them, though. And I'm just like, well, it's kind of, kind of, kind of whack. But I don't know why I'd, I honestly don't know why I'd want to collect the single volumes. I, I don't exactly know why. Because, since the deluxe editions have the cover art of the volumes in the back anyways, like, there wouldn't really be a point. There's no difference between them, they're just the single volumes. But my brain's like, hey, you gotta have all of them anyways. And I'm just like, but, but I, 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 I'm getting them all through deluxe. Like, why, why would I want to keep paying more money? Brain, brain go burr. You need. Yes, Fox. Tell me, what kind of manga do you like? Cause I might be able to give you some spicy recommendations for manga. I'm an avid manga reader, and I review them too. I haven't posted any of my reviews yet, like video reviews on them, but I have done written reviews on manga. Got eyelashes in my eyeball! You, yeah, you haven't read much, but you've started, what, which one have you started at least then? What, what have you started to read? Let you find it. All right, you go searching for the wonderful book that you've started to read. I think I can turn this back around. Oh, sorry. The light table started messing up again. So I need to get an actual better light table than this because the uh, cord where the cord plugs in is very messed up. It's too loose and I can't fix it the way it needs to be fixed properly.
Bongo's reincarnated as a sword. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, do you like it so far? Do you like the idea of reincarnated in like different worlds and series like that? Because if you do like things like that, I have hella recommendations for those actually. Because I've been reading a lot of those kind of things. Okay, so if you like that one, you might want to check out one called Tensura, also known as That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. That's a really, like, magical heavy one also. There's also one called I've Been Killing Slimes for 300 Years and I've Maxed Out My Level. That's a really nice one. There's also um, I Shall Survive Using Potions, which is a nice reincarnated one. And then there's one, I can't read it from here on my bookshelf, but it's one about a sorcerer king and a barbarian golem uh, queen. That's a really nice series like that. Um, uh, yeah, those are the only ones that I've read so far. Oh, also, Kuma 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 Bear. It is a really, really cutesy one that is reincarnated-esque. Um, I, I love it a lot. It is, it's so cute. Basically, this girl is, um... A gamer and she gets reincarnated into this uh, other world and her thing is though is that she wears like a bear onesie and that's her armor and it is adorable it's 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 just great it's great I need to see if, I, if I've got those lines correct here. So I don't like messing up my lines. So yeah, that all looks correct there for lines. Okay. Some of these lines aren't light enough. Not light enough. They're not dark enough when I do the sketches. So, you know what? Let me grab it real quick. I will grab those mangas real quick. Give me a second. Okay, so I've grabbed the ones I was talking about. So, here is Kuma 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 Bear. She has a black bear version and a white bear version. Um, hold on. I'm just gonna turn the light table off for this to make this easier to see. And then so, these things are also her um, storages and it's really cute and she goes on adventures and stuff and helps people. And then, here's I Shall Survive Using Potions. Um, her or ordeal is that she makes these potions at her own will in any type of bottle she wants, and these potions can do anything she wants. Um, I, I'm trying to think. I have two in the series so far. They're making more. Kuma 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 Bear has four so far in the series, with the fifth one being made. Been killing slimes for 300 years. I maxed out my level. She is a witch and stuff, and she her family just keeps growing and growing and stuff, and it's about her, her life. It's like a more slice of life uh, type one also. There are currently five in the series, with a sixth and seventh on the way, I believe. I forgot I had this one. How about to summon a demon lord? It's, it's kind of harem-esque, obviously, but the guy is reincarnated into a magical world and stuff. And that's basically that. He's a demon lord and whatnot for the simple effect of that one. And then the Sorcerer King of Destruction and the Golem of the Barbarian Queen, uh, he gets reincarnated into a world, and he has this, like, um, he's supposed to be the new Sorcerer King of Destruction, apparently, is what it is. And along the way, he he, he creates a golem, and it, it happens to be this, like, female-looking thing you learn in this one. And then we have that time I got reincarnated as a slime. There, oh, uh, this... The, the Sorcerer King has, I think, two volumes total. 
I don't know how many how not to summon a demon lord. But so far, that time we got reincarnated as a slime has 15 in the manga so far. Uh, the anime has it just released the first part of season two. But literally, just like reincarnated as a sword, they're reincarnated as a slime. They have all these magical powers and stuff, and it's it's great. There's lots of action and fighting. It's uh, unique. Um, it's it's very nice. They're all they're all things I've read, and they're they're wonderful. And I'm gonna plug the light table back in now, so I can continue. But yeah, those those manga are, are really nice. Um, How Not to Summon a Demon Lord does have an anime also for it. Um, I believe it only got one season and will not be getting a season two. Sadly, like most of the ones I like. Um, Kuma 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 Bear does have an anime also. I think there's only a couple episodes though so far for it. I know they're going to be making more. And I don't know if the other ones have um, anime yet for them. I've not looked into it a whole lot for those. They are really good. And then, if you're ever interested in Yuri Slice of Life romances, I got I got even more recommendations for those, because that's like all I mainly read, is Yuri Slice of Life romance. Because it is, it's so, so cute. And it's just, oh, it's, there, there is heartbreak in every single one of them to a small extent, but it all comes out wonderful, no matter what. They're just lovely, lovely pieces of work, regardless. What do I need to do next? Okay, hairlines. I would love to read some lesbian manga. Okay, I'm not gonna grab all of them because there's way too many. But, um, let me, let me just type a list real quick of, um, all the ones that I would recommend, which is all the ones I've read. So obviously it would be Blooming to You, we have Frag Time, we have... They're, they're just all so good. Um, okay, one of them will, will, is called Killing Me. It only got, um, one manga before it was, um, actually, uh, canned, though, before it was, uh, canceled and everything, which I don't know why it was. I couldn't find any info regarding it, but they're, they're just, it, they're, they're so good, though. Throws Pokeball at Fox, wow, but you don't throw Pokeballs at me? <laughs> One of my top ones currently would be Strawberry Fields once again. Um, it is a really nice one. Also, um, I'm trying to look. Um, Citrus Citrus is obviously an OG one, but there are the second series is uh, Citrus Plus. So there there are two of them in it. But yeah, Citrus by far one of the OG Yuri mangas that there are. Oh, you pulling out guns now? What are you? doing um you know there's just there, there, there's just there, there's so many and like i've got so many more in my list uh to read also and it's just 
Ugh, I just, I can't explain it. They're just so good. This is, this is a long list of the ones that I have currently had, that I currently uh, have right now. Because they're, they're just too good. I, I can't, I can't not have them. Oh yeah, A Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow is currently my top one that I'm reading though. It is amazing. The only thing I hate about it is I have to wait till next month for for one of the for one of them to come out, and then I think the other one comes out in November or something, and then the final volume comes out in flipping December. I gotta wait for December for the final volume, and it's just why why. Turns on TV show, <laughs> Fudge and Kara tied up. Wow, wow. Okay, there's the list of all the Yuri manga I currently have. The last one, my androgynous boyfriend. I know I spelled that. I know I spelled androgynous wrong. It's obviously not a Yuri, but it is like it's almost just like a Yuri, and it's uh it's, it's really cool. But yeah, those are all the ones that I have currently that are that are. Good. Oh yes, I almost forgot because. Revolutionary Girl Utena is technically actually a Yuri. Most of it's symbolic and metaphors and stuff. It has it's a different, really odd, um, mind-boggling um, story and everything. But it is technically a Yuri. It's classified as one. Um, Revolutionary Girl Utena has two uh, hardback uh, box novels that you can buy. And then it has one called Revolutionary Girl Utena After the Revolution, which is an after story uh, compilation of uh, solo characters and how the uh, different storylines would have turned out. And that is also really, really nice. I liked it a lot. Oh, Ty, you wanting to read all the Yuri manga I have? Yeah, copy paste, save it to the list. I have a lot of other manga that you're interested in. I have all kinds. I've got gore manga, I've got action manga, I've got more fighting um, oriented. I've got some sadder stuff. I've got some horror. Um, I've got a little bit of everything for manga. And um, I, I honestly, everyone I've gotten so far is really nice. Gore and horror. So... If you want things like that, obviously you're gonna want one called another um Kakagiri obviously is just a nice one. It's got gore in it. It, it does. Um what else do I have? <clears throat> um Obviously Tokyo Ghoul is a nice one. Uh, then there's Dead Man Wonderland, um, is, is also a nice one. <clears throat> um, let me see. Oh, if you want gore and messed up stuff, Berserk 100% all the way is one like that. Um, so, Elf and Leod, um, it's spelled lied, but it's German, so it's Leod. Um, Elfin Leads are really messed up. Some some scenes are hard to like. It has a uh, anime, but some scenes are hard to watch slash read. Um, they're a little uh, a little bit on the gorier side. Um, <clears throat> let me think. Um, though you may burn to ash is a really really nice one. There are only six volumes in it because sadly the Mangakis artist uh, passed away due to some health issues, so he didn't get to finish. Um, though you may burn to ash as a whole, but there are still six volumes in the series, and it is, it is a very lovely one for it being, um, gore and horror-esque. It's like, it's like Kagagurian sense with gambling and stuff, but it's, the way the art is depicted is very unique to manga, I would say. Um, Immortal Hounds has a lot of gore, um. You can look up the story for that one. It's got all of its own. Its its story is not easy to explain. I mean, I could explain it, but it's it's just different, you know. 
Um, if if you want if you want an a a, um, a manga that is just all out cute cutesy, it's slightly harem but not, but it's like it's just uber cute. I recommend today's service, twelve full volumes, and it is amazing. It it was my first manga I ever read, and it. It's what got me into manga, was today's Cerberus. You can easily Google it. You can see screenshots and stuff of how it looks and everything. I loved it so dearly. I I wish they had an anime for it. I really, really do. Because it is... It's, it's so wonderful. I loved it a lot. How am I gonna kill with everyone? But everyone is so busy. See, I've had that in my list of anime to watch for a long time. Actually, I just never have gotten around to it because I always like keep watching other ones instead. And I'm just like, oh, I found this. I'm gonna watch it before I forget about it. But that one has been in my list for a while. <clears throat> but yeah, if you tell me any kind of manga that you're wanting to look at, what genre, I probably have some recommendations that would uh, go into it. Because manga is my stuff. Hell yeah. Um, I could just list off all, all, all the manga I have is great. Devil Survivor is nice. They even have a video game for it. Stravaganza is more medieval type stuff. It's great. Uh, the Girl from the Other Side is a really nice one. The Ruby Anthology is nice. Um, Alice in Murderland is really, really good. Um, it's got nothing to do with Alice in Wonderland, despite all of like, the uh, clothing de depictions and how the characters are, or like, the exact thing of that, but it's not. Which was kind of interesting. Um, Rascal does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. That series is really, um, it's actually really nice if you like a little mind-boggling kind of stuff. Um, that, that's a really good one. Um, I'm trying to think. So, cause I've already talked about all basically all the manga I have, and there's some that I can't see because I'm blind as hell from this chair and my bookshelves being all the way over somewhere else. Wait, I think I forgot one of the Yuri mangas, so I'm trying to look over there. And I know I see one, but I can't read what it says because it's in cursive. Um... Dang it! Hold on, hold on, let me get up, let me get up. I gotta figure out what it is. I don't know how I forgot- I just yanked my headset really bad. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up doing that a lot. Okay, it is called A Witch's Love at the End of the World. This is a really nice uh, new new series. Also, it's about this um, these people are witches and stuff, and they're trying to technically live with the humans, but not at the same time, like coexisting, but not. And they're at the spe special witch school. And one of them has a very unique power. Can't say what it is, because that would be a spoiler. And the uh, the two girls start to fall in love, because it's a Yuri, obviously. But there is... this. It says it in the synopsis, and like within the first like pages of the manga, so it's not a spoiler. But when a witch falls in love, they lose their powers. And so that is like the main issue with all of this, is that they have to try to deal with that aspect and figure out what they're going to do. There are currently two uh, manga in the series, 
I, um, you know what? I can tell you how many are in the series completely for all of these manga, because I keep a detailed list. Oh, I forgot! If you want a very gory, uh, messed up game, not game, I, I can't think, um, um, uh, anime, not anime, manga, Toyo Game. Toyo Game is a very, very gory and heavy one. It's almost like the manga called Another. Um, it is a really nice one. Let me go to my Yuri section of this really quick. And I will tell you how many volumes are in certain ones that I actually know of. So if you are thinking about reading them, you can know if you need to wait or not for a one uh, uh, a bunch of them. Because, you know, I hate waiting, but, you know, gotta do it for a lot. So if you're my androgynous boyfriend, um, the third one is coming out on June 8th. Strawberry Fields, once again, June 22nd is the final one. I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, a Witch's Love at the End of the World. Volume 3 comes out May 18th. Um, not sure if that is the final one yet, though. Um, you've got things like... Oh yeah, Torture Princess. Let me put that one in the chat. So y'all can add it to your list. Um, Torture Princess is also a really nice, uh, gory one. Um... You have things like Our Teachers Are Dating. They have four volumes so far. The fourth one releasing on September 21st. Um, let me think here. Do, 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 do. Um, the things for like the uh, reincarnated anime stuff and slash manga. Um, I Will Survive Using Potions. Currently it has technically six volumes. Uh, the third one will be released um, actually, the third volume's already released. Uh, I have to look up the fourth. The fourth and the sixth ones are in serialization currently. Um, Killing Simus for 300 years. Uh, there are currently five in the process. Uh, the sixth one coming out May 18th and August 17th for the seventh. The eighth one is currently unknown for a release date. Um, let's see. Goodbye, My Rose Garden has three volumes in total. All released. Cocoon and Twine currently has... Uh, three volumes, the third one coming out July 20th. Then you have Whisper Me a Love Song, uh, currently four volumes in process, third one releasing June 8th, and the fourth one July 13th. Um, a Tropical Fish Urines, Urines for Snow, there are currently, as I've said, there are eight, um, six of them are currently out, the seventh one is May 11th, the eighth one is December 14th, and the ninth one has an unknown date, and it is the final one. Carolyn Tuesday. Uh, I believe there are two so far. Uh, the first two are out. Uh, we don't know if there's going to be a third one at all. Um, then there's other Yuri manga that I just have. That's the list, but I don't own any of them yet. So I you know, won't put them in there. But if you're looking for other Yuri-type mangas, you'd want NTR, which is uh, Netsuso Trap. You have Girl Friends. It's two separate words. You have Hana and Hina. You have Kasei-san Morning Glories, and there's a multiple series now, and there's like seven different series with it. Uh, there's one called Yuri is My Job. Um, you know, Kiss of the Rose Princess is not exactly a Yuri, but you know, it's got some things like that in it. Um, they're just all really fantastic manga, and I've got a list of this. This notebook is just filled with list and list of manga of all kinds that I really like. Um, I'm not so much into, like, the horror manga as I was with the couple ones I do have, or, like, heavy gore stuff. I don't know, my brain just kind of goes weird with that. That's why I, like, turn to other, like, um, Yuri-esque stuff and whatnot, because it's just easier for me. I like the more cutesy stuff. But, like, I will read them. Like, if they're good reads, I'm obviously gonna read them. Because there's no reason, like, you shouldn't read them. Because they're, they're all good, no matter what. Ugh, I hate how sometimes when I do these lines on sketches, and then I transfer them to this paper, I don't make them dark enough, so sometimes they are really hard to see. So I don't always know if I'm getting the correct lines that I want. But if I make them all too dark, like, as you can see the ones that are 
not as dark lines as the other ones. Those are shade lines, so I know where I need to shade. Like the one I just did, that's going to be a shade line. And that's why it's very lightly drawn on there. And I do the same thing, obviously, for the, uh... <clears throat> Jeez. Ugh. I need water, but I don't want to go downstairs. But yeah, if, if I uh, draw it too dark on the, uh... Normal paper, I won't, I won't know which line's which, because I don't memorize these completely all, all the time. I really need to get her hand finished over here. Because, so like, all of hers is very simple lines and stuff. And then I'm going to do, like, the background and whatnot. The background's like very, very simple. A lot of the pen is going to bleed when I do the background, and um, a lot of things are gonna look a little weird because the background is like they're in like this. Uh, I think they're in like the club room during this scene, but the club room is like really dark because they're there, like uh, you know, when it's when the sun is setting and whatnot. So it's yeah, it's not like easy to see. Everything there's kind of like dark shaded and whatnot. I don't exactly want to make everything dark shaded, you know? Oh, I was afraid that I mess up hands quite often, especially fingers. Fingers are just... Fingers and hands are just weird. Like, a lot of the time, I don't- I can't do hands very well, so I'll take, like, a mini, like, looking template thing, and I'll just be like, oh, wow, what's the hand look like? <laughs> I'll just freaking do it. And I'll just, like, hold it up there for a second, and I'm just like, okay, I gotta- here's the hand! Is there a line- yeah, see, look, like, I could- I, could, I couldn't even see these shade lines. There's shade lines that go right through here. Oh, okay, um, she should probably get the rest of her arm over here in her hand. Are weird, so I can pop off yeah, yeah, hands are just, I don't know, hands and legs. I refuse to draw feet, though. If anyone ever asks me to draw a foot, it's a no. <laughs> I don't, I don't like feet. I don't want to try drawing feet. It would be funny if, like, the next thing you know, I decide, like, okay, cool, I'll draw a foot one time, and I'm, like, really good at it, and I'm just like, well, I've cursed myself, because now I can draw feet. Just like I can draw, I can draw Yif really damn well. So furry porn, I can draw extremely well. And so the the joke is, is that I'm cursed with the talent of doing that. And some of the um, the commissions that people want me to do that is regarding heavy NSFW uh, furries. A lot of the times, I will turn it down. Uh, I, cause, I mean, I don't feel the most comfortable doing it, it's just not my thing, granted I'm good at it. And, like, so, I, I'm, I'm glad that people can give me, like, very descriptive, descriptive details on what they want. But there's just something about someone telling me, I want it, like, the, the original picture I want, I'm imagining them hard. And, like, it's the size of, like, three foot long dong. But can you make it flaccid and wrinkly? And I'm just like, you know, I didn't want to hear that. I, I just... Why? Why? Ugh. 
hooves and paws. Yeah, they, those, those, those things are just much simpler to draw and easier to deal with than actual feet. Because, like, actual feet, like, I think actual shit, like, more realistic and legitimate shading goes into, like, human feet and hands. Whereas, if you're doing, like, an animals or something, it's just, I think it's a lot easier to do, if even if they have shading. It's just, it's simple, because you know where, like, the shadows are going to be. Whereas feet, it's like, well, I got this angle now, but if it's this kind of angle, then if this shadow's here, and I got light here, and I got to think about the shadows, I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's too much thinking for my brain to, um, to do. Um, oh, the next thing, Fox, do you like horror movies? Specifically B-grade horror movies. You've only said O. Oh. oh, you haven't watched Holy Movies? Okay. Um, well, I don't watch actual horror movies. I watch, like, the, um, the B-grade ones that are bad. So bad that they're funny, but they're so bad that they're actually good. Like, uh, Trancers is a really good one. Uh, Puppet Master is a nice series. Um, if it's, like, okay, so, like, when it was considered new age horror movies, like back in like the 1980s and stuff, and the 90s and what, um, Hellraiser. Hellraiser is one of my all-time favorites, even though the storyline turns to complete shit, because Clive Barker at a point stopped uh, directing them, and the whole cast changed a lot. The first three um, actually go together, so it's like a technical trilogy. The fourth one kind of ties in with the third one, like it kind of uses one of the same characters, so you kind of get like the... Uh, the point of it, but then, like, anyone after the fourth one, the storylines don't match up at all, and it's all different directors and cast members, and they honestly kind of ruin the franchise. Nonetheless, I still haven't seen all of them, even though I want to. There's, like, 11 or 12 of them in total, but the the latest one they came out with, I think it was 2018 or 2017, um, it wasn't, Hellraiser at that point wasn't about gore anymore. It was about, can I, how disgusting and uncomfortable can I make my viewer feel? Um, because there are some scenes involving, um, um, how do I put this without it being disgusting? There are scenes that involve vomit, oh no, it, it, okay, let me say They involve regurgitation, and then eating said regurgitation. I'm just like, no, 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 this isn't, this isn't gore, this isn't horror, this is disgusting. This, this movie it was, was awful because of that specific reason. And I'm just like, they really couldn't have uh, stayed true to the series and gone for gore. They went for, like, disgusting garbage. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus. I couldn't stand it. I sat through, like, the whole two hours to watch it, though. Because I'm like, you know what? I'm a fan. I'm just going to do it anyways. It, oh, it, was, it was dumb. It was so dumb. You're a scaredy cat? Well, that's... I am too. That's why I watch the really crappy ones that are more funny than anything. They're not exactly crappy. They're good, honestly, to me. Like, I watch those ones because they're much easier to uh, to sit through and actually watch and be like, oh, haha, this is funny. Or like, oh, wow, okay, this is nice in a, in a sense that it's so bad it's good. This light table keeps messing up because this thing won't stay plugged in very well. Hopefully I can get this done before it breaks on me. So I'd rather not have it break in the middle of this because then I'm not going to be able to tell where uh, all the rest of the, uh, the lines are that I need to see. Okay, let's start with doing the hair now. Does that hair piece connect right there? It doesn't, but I think it should. Uh, let me pull up this scene really quick on my my computer because I feel like that hairline's supposed to connect. 
And I just think I just missed it where it's supposed to connect. Yeah, it, it does, it does. It, it connects right here. I just completely missed, like, part of the line. Alright, that that makes sense, actually. I, I, I do that often. Sometimes I'll just miss the line from the scene. These lines I put really close together. I think one of them is supposed to be a shade line. Uh, up on the top of the head because the sunlight's peering through these windows. So I think that kind of messed me up a little bit because they're, they're so, so close to each other. And then I'm going to have to think about colors for this. Because their uniforms are the same, their skin tones, like, because of the lighting, looks very similar to, like, their uniform color. So, I might have to change up some colors on this when I color it. Which, uh, I mean, I don't necessarily want to do. I like to keep the original colors for this. Because it's one of my favorites, but, you know, I think a little slight shade tones, different shades of colors. Won't be the, uh, the worst of things for this one. Go into the ear. Round the rest of this off. Okay, Let's see if I can turn this back without eating the light table. Okay, Let's do cords in my way again. Let's get the rest of this part done here, so I don't have to worry about where the eye is. Because if I know where the eye is, I kind of get better placement on some things. We have that hard eyebrow dark line coming through here. Alright, now let's see if I can get this eye correct without messing anything up. Okay, so we have the actual lash line technical up here. Comes back there. We have the rounded part, the eye, and the circle right there, one line there, one line there, fine line in front, and then one right there. I think that's how I drew it. Yep, that's exactly how I drew it. Okay, just need to make sure. And then if I look on the scene, I'll know that it looks fine the way it does. Yeah, it's supposed to look a little weird until I get the color in. This bottom line is a little darker up to here. Okay. That's the way it looks with a little outcrop lash right there. Okay. Alright, uh, I think there's a little shade part up here. There is a little shade right here. Okay. So, a little shade. And let's get some more of this hairline in here. These are half shaded, half hard lines. Because the top of this, her hair is shaded in a format. Hard line coming through up here. Okay, uh, I can't see my shade lines very well anymore, so... I'm gonna have to keep flipping the page up to see where a lot of my shade lines are going. There's a shade line all across the top here.
There we go. I think there's a couple little small shade marks right there. Yep, correct. Alright, and now we're going to go into this nice long ponytail she's got. As soon as we get the rest of the rounded head done. I really want to get this done before uh, before um, Cha is done streaming. So I really want to give them another raid because I really, really like their art. And they are a wonderful person. I really wish that I could at some point raid um, Hoshi Hoshi Dreams because I she is a very, very adorable, family friendly uh, VTuber who does art, she uh, does karaoke and stuff, she reads books on stream, she does a lot of stuff. It's, it's, it's really wonderful. And very calming and stuff. It's she's, she's got a very, very wholesome community, and it's, it is amazing. Um, I would shout them out in the chat, but like, I don't know how to do shoutouts. Because I think everyone should follow Hoshi Dreams if you really, really love wholesome content. She is just so wonderful. It's Shadow, I think? Okay, um, let me see if it works. So... I need to make sure I have their things spelled right. I, I don't know where the capitals and stuff are in their name exactly, so hold on. Yeah, I think just the H and the D are capitalized. So if I do shout out Hoshi Dreams. It did not work! Do I have to have a command for it? Alright, well well, there's their, uh... Obviously there's their, sh their Twitch name anyway, so you can see it. But yeah, definitely would give them a little check out. Because they're amazing. I know it works for most streamers that I've watched. I, th I think they have a command for it, maybe. But I would have just thought it would have just worked in general. Oh, yeah. I, I have my hand right on the cord, so the light table might flash. I'm trying to get this lower area done, so not, like, have my hand resting on the cord the whole time. The cord is in a very, very bad placement spot for this light table. And then, I gotta make sure this is hairline that I'm doing. I think I think it curves in. I wanna make sure it curves in and that I'm not hitting, like, the other background area. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is a box. I know when people hit it, like, I think, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's a bot. I think a bot has to be there for it. But I don't know how to add bots or anything. I know nothing about how Twitch works. I just do art. Okay. <laughs> That's how I feel. Because I would love to have some bots in the chat. For uh, commands and stuff and doing all that. I'm not tech savvy with Twitch though. The only thing I am tech savvy with is Borderlands statistical part spawn rates. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But you know why? It's because it is. So I got really into Borderlands uh, back in middle school and my friends got me into it. And basically, we had memorized every single Borderlands map where every single chest was that spawned weapons. 
Now, each weapon in Borderlands has a different manufacturer, different stats and stuff, and the stats are in accordance also with the uh, weapon parts that spawn on them. Different manufacturer parts can be on guns of a different manufacturer. Now, you also have to take into account the effect of the chance for it to spawn with an element and the elemental chance that it could spawn there in the first place, at times 1, 2, 3, or 4, or have the broken missing one, which would be a tactical 1, but also a 2. Now, in the middle of that, it sounds like a lot of stuff. It, 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 it gets more complicated than that. Because it's when you figure that out, you have to find out, well, if it's this chest here, what does it normally spawn in it? And now i got to think about the spawn rate of that, and what weapon type it'll, it will be, and if it has any specific perks on it. And you're getting all that, and you're just like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that kind of thing. Uh, figuring that out, and then basically we'd make, like, it got to the point where we got good enough at doing that, that we didn't have to use, like, pen and paper and write down, like, um, you know, this is what we think is going to be in this chest. We could just come to terms with, okay, we could do the math in our head. And I'm horrible at math, but video game math is the only math that I can actually do. For uh, some reason. I, I don't quite know. Maybe it's because I took more interest in video games rather than I did math, but I still could take some things that I learned from general algebra and stuff and put that into the video games for statistics and uh, DPS rates and builds and stuff. Because me and math do not get along at all. <laughs> oh, math. I hate math. Almost done with this corner spot so I can stop hitting the cord. Oh, there you go, I'm on the cord again. Stupid cords! Stop! Okay, I think that's all that goes in that area. Yeah, okay. So, uh, hey man. Mm -hmm. I never played the Telltale games. I couldn't get into Telltale games. The newest one? Yes, that would be Borderlands number three. <laughs> one I love the most. Well, I think Borderlands 2 is still the best one. Uh, Borderlands 3 was also then probably the second best, I'd say. And then Borderlands uh, 1, the prequel was hot garbage. The pre-sequel was garbage! Oh, so bad. So, so bad. I, I will never recommend anyone playing the pre-sequel. Ever. 10 out of 10, never recommend. If you want some storyline on how Jack became the way he was, then yeah, go ahead, play the pre-sequel. But if you're looking for fun and enjoyment, don't play the pre-sequel. I'm just saying, Moon Gravity and having to worry about auction was the worst unless you played as Claptrap. Claptrap's abilities are more hindrances than they are buffs to the team. But hey, it was fine. It was fun at first. And then it got dull and boring. And I was like, well, this is not cool. I don't know, it was just one of the, the worst ones. I wish the mobile game was still alive. Yes, Borderlands had a mobile game. But no one knows about that. Because it got canned really quickly. And I don't know why. I looked at it. I thought it looked cool and interesting. It was a top-down 
strategy kind of game, and I was like, wow, I kind of hate these kind of games, but, you know, the Borderlands one didn't look that bad. And then it got canned, and I was like, well, shoot, I really wanted to take a look at it. Yeah, like, someone on YouTube did a ranking of the Borderlands games, and that's where I heard about it. I was on YouTube, like, way long ago, because someone was, like, ranking them. Like, wow, I didn't know about that. And I looked it up, and it was for iOS only. And, like, no one knew, no, ha, ha, English, no one knew why it got, like, taken off. Like, there was never, like, a statement released of, oh, they just do bad, or, or the devs not want to keep up with it. It just kind of vanished. And I was like, it didn't look bad, though. It looked like it had some really nice potential. And would have loved to give it a try. Yes, tis sad. Okay, uh, I can't see these lines. Backgrounds coming together nicely. Um, is there anything on that? Yeah, there's some shade lines here. Figured there were that I would be able to see them. I think there's a couple on the other box too. Yep. Of course, of course. I can't see the shade lines. Um. Okay, there's a bunch of lines right here. There's some other ones right by her neck. Some lines going through there. Do these lines go all the way up or not? Not all of them. And then we have, okay, so there's one hard line, and then that's just, her finger is technically over here, so her hand goes all the way across over here, and it's like behind her hair, but like, it's so like, not noticeable, I don't know if I'm gonna get it to like, be well in the, uh, I color it. Get the rest of those lines in right there for that, so those are all those lines, yep. Um, so right here is the actual opening to a box. It looks like it's part of her hair, but it's not. It will be part of a box. I just have to get... Oh, shoot. I just really hit the uh, cord line. Let's so figure out where all the shade lines are for this thing. Okay. Shade lines in there. Uh, there's more background right here. I think this is another box. So a box line. And we have I think another box line. I think the rest of these lines are shade lines, technical. Yep, okay. So let's get all those in there. I think that's all of them, right? Just a couple, yeah. Okay, um, where to next? Okay, I'm missing some shade lines down here. Okay. And I think the rest of these are just background small lines. I don't think there's any more uh, shade lines. Um, making sure, double checking. Okay, yeah, so no more shade lines. Uh, all of these are, all these horizontal ones are just like um, the parts of the wall. So, let's get those in here. So, 
So, this is gonna be one of my only ones on stream, especially there. This whole paper is going to be covered in color, actually. So, we are going to be here for a hot minute coloring this. Maybe. I'm not sure if I want to color this today. I've been thinking about that. But I kind of really, really want this product finished and to turn out really, really nice. done. Let's go ahead and turn this again. Alright, so let's move this down. These aren't at the bottom of the page like I wanted them to be. I thought it would be. Um, so I'm probably going to go ahead and extend these lines. Let me take a look at the original scene so I can see how far I need to extend these lines now. Because this is part of her pant line at this point. And her shirt, if it keeps going at this angle... Go to right about there. Okay, so her, her angle is finished. I know her pant line has loops on it. And then if I'm going to extend her down, so she's sitting down. So this is more so fine. And then if I can connect these perfectly. I think I've got that enough for things going all the way down. Let me bring these finishing lines down. Then I know her hair comes to another point down here. But we won't get all the way to that point, obviously. And then I think that back line is. Oh, I think I'm still zoomed in on that. Let's zoom in over here and check this back line area. Pull that down. Let's 
it's still part of her hair. This girl has a lot of hair, I will say. Okay. And these full shade box lines will just come down. And we'll... There we go. So, that so far is our product right here. I'm going to be right back. I need to go get some water. I am parched. I'll be right back.
Ow, shit. I did the drink. I gotta grab the markers. Oh, oh, okay, it's time to color these hoes. Okay, let me move all these cords out the way. Pick up. Okay. So, now we have that. Um. Where is. Oh, shit. I, I keep flipping yoinking the mic. Uh. Give me. Oh, here, how about this? Y'all wanna see some exclusive art that no one's ever seen? Cause this is one of my old art notepads. So I've got some really old art in here. This is just some weird abstract piece. Um Yeah, I've yeah. These are like some of my more earlier art that I've done. Uh, they're kind of cool. That was this one was just a rough sketch. Um, in my old neighborhood, a bunch of houses burnt down, and yeah, you can't see it, it won't pick it up because it's such light pencil on that. Um, there's another outline of a gun. Another outline of a gun. This one is I don't know why. This one is just weird. I haven't, like, messed with things in a very long time. Yeah. And then, okay, so my friend made these roses. I didn't do those roses. But here's this. This is Archangel Michael. Um, you know, yeeting ye ye a demon. This is very hard to see. Um, I'm gonna see if I get closer, if you can make out. All these are done with pencil, and I haven't done pencil in a long time. Yeah, there we go can see that much much better and then we have okay I did a self portrait at one time I again I can't draw fucking hands or teeth so the teeth look a little messed up granted mine are IRL but yeah look at that fucking hand what the fuck is that hand Um, that was just a cross with wings, and then I don't think I have actually anything else in this whole notebook. I've got all this blank paper, and I just, this is all I did. Did you say no? noodle? Noodle? What do you mean noodle? <laughs> what do you mean the noodle? Let's get to the color phase of this bad boy, though. Let me open up my colors. Okay. Macaroni noodle fingers. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I just can't do hands. And, like, I think I still have the original photo for that. It was a printed photo that I took from Snapchat. <laughs> and I just couldn't do it. I was like, this hand is so awful. Alright, let's see if I can get the colors correct for this. So, the main character's hair, her hair is like... she, She's got like, orangish red hair. It's like ginger, but it's not. And because of the light coming through out on, on the scene... I'm really trying to think hard for her hair color. Like... I could go with a color 24, which is a marigold. But, like, it's not the same color. What do I do for her hair? Maybe a 28? All of my things are labeled. What's 28? 28 says it's fruit pink. But it looks like the same color. We're gonna go ahead and try it. There's no harm in going over with multiple colors. So, I'm going to attempt this. 
but I'll need a darker shade for her hair. I have some lighter, very light brown orangey colors I can mix. I can use some grays in there for shade also. So, her hair is going to be this marigold color regardless. Even if it's not perfect, it will be fine. All will be fine. These ladies are lovely. By the way, for reference, this is the senpai, this is the kohai, she's the older one. The older one right now is being domed. <laughs> Ain't that funny. Okay. This color actually doesn't look bad when it dries. It dry Every color I have obviously dries on different than when it uh, goes on wet because they're all alcohol markers. But I think it actually doesn't look that bad. It's like a very light... It's labeled as fruit pink, obviously, and it looks kind of peachy, honestly. Which is kind of what her hair color is now that I'm looking at it more. It's kind of this uh, peachy color. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's nice. It's nice. Laughs in role reversal. <laughs> oh, for the times that roles have been reversed that I've seen. Okay, I'm trying to think of where all the hair goes. So the hair goes up all over here behind the ear. Okay, so all this is hair. Nice, nice. Hair is coming along nicely. Then I will go over the shaded parts of her hair with a very light gray, just to give that nice little darker tone of color. Once I get to... Once the rest of this dries on her hair, go through and do those little portions. I like to get all of these segments done first. Makes it a little easier to get around to the rest of the hair. Because then I can do long scoops all the way around here and merge it at an angle where I get to be. I get this little line. So this one's gonna be a little odd because a lot of her hair is not separated unlike this one where it's a lot of different sections where I won't have to worry about the overshade. On this one, I gotta kinda worry about a little bit of overshade from the marker going over itself in general and drying a bit too much before I get the next part of it touched because then it'll shade and it'll darken itself naturally if I just go over it again like I normally do so it's all even. But if I don't get the overshade correct, then it's all going to be too dark once I go over it. So I'm just going to have to keep coming back and doing little parts like that. While I have to get the rest of that seat a little mark over the top, keep it a little bit of wet. If I can get that portion in, so I can just worry about touching that and getting this at the same time. Get that a little wet. Alright, I can worry about getting this again. Back up here, touch that, and then I'm gonna start coming down to the rest of it here. I'm just gonna be able to do this. And I can just get around that line really quick, and then I can just boop the rest of this really quick, like. So I won't get any overshade that's too much. And I can start getting the rest of this hair part up here up top. go and then what I can do is leave it off right there where it's a little mark because it won't it won't show too bad and then I really want to get 
I'm gonna keep that part right there wet. While I go ahead and get these small lines done right here. So I won't have to worry about coming down for them. And then if I keep those wet, I can just do this. Then go across and just keep making these lines. Get down to the edge. Go back over that a little bit because I know it still wasn't shaded enough in that area. A little bit over. And we can keep the rest of this in line. Keep it the same shade. Wow, this hair color is actually turning out wonderful. Way more than I thought it would for her hair color type. Now right here, it's a little bit too light, so we're going to darken that a bit by going over it right again. All right, when, it, when that part dries, it'll be lighter. And then so the next part we can do is this little section right here, because it's separated ever so slightly by that shade line. So it won't necessarily go through onto the other part of the hair yet. But it will start to bleed through, but it won't matter too much on it, because it's a single separate part. Now, just like these parts right here, we can also just go over them, because they're single parts, that are separated by lines. This one's not too bad, it's just a little opening on that edge, so we can go ahead and just go ahead and get this line out of the way. And then we want to work on, see this right here, get that, and then we'll go over the eyebrow with black, obviously. So that part will just get covered up anyways. Now we gotta start building right here. We gotta go up from here. Let me look at this and we're like, well, how do we want to do this? You can do this part in many different ways. To keep this whole area still wet and in the same shade tone. Usually I'll just go at an angle. Go down a little bit. Angle it again. Go over. And we'll just go over that little eyebrow part because it'll get recolored anyways. And we have that hair piece done also. And we're going to go ahead and slap ourselves over down to this little piece. Color difference right there on that small edge won't be the biggest thing, the biggest problem for us at all. I'm going to quickly get this little mini part right down here and we're going to keep this area wet. There we go. Go ahead, come down here, go back. And there we go. Her hair color, main color, is now done. Oh, I forgot the top part. <laughs> Got her little, her little, like, alfalfa thing, since a lot of the characters in this have, like, a little thing like this sometimes. Most a lot of anime characters actually have, like, a little thing like this on top of their hair sometimes. Alright, and then we're going to go with over with a very light gray. I would say a CG1, which is a cool gray color. Or we can go with the... Could go with a WG1, which is a warm gray. See, I don't know, because that one's more gray. Hmm. Hmm. How to do this right. Yes, indeed. Thank you. It is so pretty. I gotta think about how to do the uh, shade in her hair correctly. Because I don't want the wrong gray to be used on the shading for her hair. Because so I'd normally use a CG1 because that's like the best one I have. I do have a 0 0.5 for WG. Uh, oh dear, I don't know what to use. Hmm. Huh. We're gonna go ahead and just use a CG1. Where I'm just gonna say screw it, we'll go with what I normally use, and it shouldn't look too bad, I think. So let's go ahead and we will shade all of the shaded parts of her hair. It looks way different in person, I will say that. 
Oh, you going? You going, Fox? You leaving me? A lot of her hair is actually shaded, contrary to like the uh, light areas that it has. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna like shade everything the way the the scene has it, cause I kind of want to keep some of it normal. I do like this natural color that she has. I think that's enough for a shade on her. I need to zoom in on the scene so I can get... I think they, they both have brown eyes, actually, now that I look at it. Let me go ahead and get these hard brow lines, though. Slash brow line. And then, oh dear, hot part. So she's got like a little, little shadow right here. Just, I just need a little teeny bit of this black on here. The rest of her eye is kind of it's kind of a weird uh, color. So the top of it is an extremely extremely light brown. So probably want to go for a 104 for her eye. Well, the top the bottom part's lighter than the. We can just gray tone. We'll gray tone the bottom. So we will go for a 104 for the eye. And then I can just gray tone the bottom of her eye. There we go. That works. Um, and then. Okay. Um, oh, dear. Okay, so let's take a look at. We'll go ahead and do her pant color. Well, not pants, it's a skirt. The skirt is brown. The shirt's white with some gray overtones. So, I guess what we can do is, where the shade is, we can make... All this will be white, the rest will be gray toned. So, we'll use the CG1 for that. Again, so we're going to be using a lot of CG1 gray. And, so let's get the pants. Pants, skirt, damn it, same difference! <laughs> Okay, and that's kind of a dark-ish brown. Not too dark, but a little dark. So, let's go ahead and get, like, the loops. We're gonna make the loops. Not the loops, but they're, like, the uh, indented parts on the skirts. Different color from the rest. So, we'll use a... We'll use a 102, okay? So, a 102 color is raw umber, and then the 104 is a brown gray. So, let's just go ahead and get her pants done. Skirt! Damn it! I'm gonna keep calling the pants! 
There we go. So, skirt's done. Oh, look, I got a little skirt. Ha 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 ha. I got it right. Alright, their undershirt collars are a darker gray than what I have for a CG1. So, we'll probably make that a CG3. So, it's two steps up, which is a cool gray. So, let's go ahead and get that in line. So,. The top part is brighter than the bottom slightly. So we'll go ahead and get that part of the collar in. And then the lighter part, we'll just go ahead and CG1. Because it's not the same color as the rest, technically. I mean, we'll CG2 it. It's just a little lighter here. Which my phone won't pick up exactly, but what will is when I actually take an after photo of it. My camera can kind of see it a little bit, as you can see, but not too much. So everything, like with these lines, is all um, this nice cool gray we're going to make. So I'm going to do that. And that's all light right there. Uh, right here is also a dark part. Everything else below these lines and stuff will be all dark parts. So we just need to figure out where to start and what's the easiest to do so we don't get overbleed lines and um, start messing this up a lot. So let's get these other little parts done. Okay, now we can do this whole area. Which is all gray tone. Of course, that hard pen line in the middle is going to bleed a lot. There we go. This one sleeve done. And now, see the shading on the skin? Also, I'm going to have to... Uh, worry about a little bit and get that done. I forgot to put one of the shade pen lines in for her skin. So it goes it goes from here at the same uh, focal point and then just kind of this pen just I, I, I really I really hate my pens sometimes they just decide to uh, stop working for no reason. So the skin tones are gonna have to be weird so um, I've got two separate technical skin tones. They are very, very light and different, so I'll have to figure out which one will go on which side. Let's continue the shirt. So we'll do the uh, front half now. Because it shouldn't be too hard. Most of it's very thin, and then it goes into thick. But again, it should be fairly easy to keep these areas in line, in, in line and wet still, so I don't get the off shading for them.
Okay, her shirt is done. I'm probably going to decide to uh, color the rest of it a different gray no matter what. Because uh, I don't want to color this because there's just too much white space on it. So, so let me think for a second. Oops, that is used my mic, so I might, I might just put a CG2 on it. Relatively, I should have done the CG2 and all the other stuff, and the CG1 and all this. That would have probably made it look better, but you know what? This, this will be fine. Alright, there is her shirt, fully done. Okay, now... Oh, oh stretch. Oh, I can get into the skin tone for her really quick. So... We'll do skin white for her normal color, and then we will do the milky white for these little tones over here. Little shades. So yes, this milky white will be all the shaded area. Not the shaded area, the light area, because it is the lighter color. And then we will go ahead and use the skin white, obviously, for the rest of the color for her. Which means I need to put this right on top of here. up on there. The best way to do this without getting over color. Get all of these parts first. Go ahead and just go straight through those lines. looks darker, but it dries lighter than what this color actually is. And my camera distorts all colors I use, which is fantastic. I love it when that happens. Ha 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 ha. Keep this area over there wet. There we 
go for her face is done. And we'll go ahead and move to the arm over here. Go. That's part of the rest of that arm done. Let's get the rest of her hand and her other arm done. That's her hand done. Okay, so her body's fully done. Now, oh, uh, now we can move on to this young lady. Their eyes are the exact same, though. So, top part's darker, so. Um, let me grab some colors here. So, we'll start by making all around here. A nice 102 color. And we will CG1 the rest of her eye. Wrong end of the marker. And the rest of her eye will do a CG 0 0.5, which is extremely, extremely light gray. Just for that eye. And then we'll get this black color in just for this. Okay, so that is the eye done for her. Um, let's, just, let's get a color for her mouth just really quick, so I don't forget to do that later. We'll, we'll do an 88 in there, which is a nice purple gray, but it's pink, so it's kind of a weird name color, but it's just for her mouth, and then we'll put one just around there for hers also like her tongue aspect. Okay, and then we're gonna move to her hair, so let me get a nice color. So her hair is two-tone brown. 
So I need two uh, browns that are gonna work very nicely for her hair for all the uh, other toned colors. So it is a darker brow. So raw umber will work perfectly. Her pant color would work perfect for her hair. That's exactly what her hair color is, is a raw umber color. And then for the lighter parts of her hair, we could just do a this 104, this brown gray I have. So let's get all the light parts in actually. For her hair. Some just got added in the Discord. Give me a second. Okay, whatever. So let's get the rest of these light bits. All this area is light, also. Let's go ahead and work with all this. Part of this is light, along with this. Let's get those light bits in there. Back line's all light, so let's get that. There we go. Um, what else is light here that I'm looking for? This little patch right here, all the way down, looks to be light. Um, got, yeah, this patch is light also, so let's get that. Go. So we've got all the uh, light parts for her hair done. Just a little bit. Here we go. So all the light parts for her hair are done. So every, all, all the rest of this hair is going to be one color. This nice raw umber. 102. So, oh, you know what? Before I forget, I forgot we're going to get that hard black brown line in here. And forget that. So let's get to coloring all the rest of this hair now. This is this very dark brown. Thank you. 
I'm still gonna have to keep this charmed for this part, I guess. Now I can do the rest of her hair. Her hair is now done. Oh gosh, my back. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do her shirt. So, same thing as this one, but most of it's gonna be all CG1 or CG2. I might CG2 all of it. I'll just keep in line, we'll do CG1 for all of it. I'll do a CG2 and a 3 for the shade slash... 
collar. So, all right, front of the collar will be CG2. Bam. CG3 for top collar. And then we can go ahead and uh, CG2 all of the uh, light portions of this one, which is what we're going to do. So. Alright, then I think everything else is CG1 for all this. It is, everything else is just gonna be CG1. It's a lot of CG1, holy hell. Hmm. Oh, this one's gonna be. Little tougher to, to keep all of it all the same color where it needs to be. So, my mic decided to die in the complete middle of that. Alright, I gotta plug it in now. Shirt is now done. Now we move to the skin tones. So the lighter parts will be the uh, milky white. The light tones are here. Oh, I forgot a part of her shirt. I'll get that in a second. Really, really white tones right here. Okay. Let me 
get that one part of her shirt I missed real quick. Alright, uh, let me grab my blush color that I usually generally use. This is 125. Because I forgot to add their blush in. 125 might be too bright. That's fine. Uh, so let me get the skin tone on then. Where is my skin white? There it is. So let's get her skin done. Little corner first. Let's bring all the fingers down. Bring all the fingers down. Rotate. Get to the rest of the hands here. The arms. Her arm done. Now let's get all this face done. That is her skin tone done. Let's get her blush in there. It's very, very bright, but that's fine. And then we need that milky white for a second. Just to go a little bit more over these areas. Now we need to start the background. Backgrounds, a lot of other browns too. But they are lighter, different browns. So we will go with move a bunch of these markers over so I can see what I want to go with here. We will go with I don't think I pulled out the 101. I did not pull out the 101. Okay, so actually we'll go with the 97. A 97 is a nice rose beige. So we'll do a rose beige for these uh the wood stuff that is right here. Which is all this, all this is just rose beige. You know what I just realized? Here. I forgot part of her. This is also her arm. Completely forgot about that. I almost went over there with a brown, which would have ruined it. But good thing I caught that. Around 
your finger. There we go. Nice rose beige. Alright, it extends up out to right here. This is just all shelf. And all this is also shelf, except for that one little part right there. So we'll go ahead and do this. Brown because this is a box over here and stuff. But this brown, actually, the brown does extend all the way over to this. Okay, so. Because all this back here is also extended brown. Colors, colors, look at this thing, colors. This is a yellowish type of thing up here. It's like a great holder kind of thing looking. Um, there is a lot of black in the rest of this, so let's get the black out of the way that is in this. Which should be this little part right here. This part. And then this sliver right here. Lines are a little bit black here. Between a couple. Okay. Those lines are all black lines. For the top part, um, this part right here that slants is actually black, so let's get that in there. It's a type of goldish yellow almost. Um, I could probably use a 49 on it. Yeah, let me grab a 49. It is pastel green. Which is, it looks kind of yellowy, in all honesty. But I do like it. It's very easy on the eyes for a color. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. Hold on. I forgot since spring is here and winter, the ants will crawl up into my fucking windowsill. And I just found one crawling on me, so yeah, that was, that was nice. I, I hate that. Got that thing there. Alright, um, I need a, a decent brown for all these cardboard boxes. I'm having trouble thinking of a brown. So 
I don't want it too light. It doesn't need to be too dark. I don't have like a cardboard, cardboard color. Um, I could try a 32 or a 33. Melon yellow and deep yellow. We're gonna go with the melon. Oh, what the? F I just like threw. I'm, I'm dropping everything today. Go with this melon yellow. Just because I want to see how it looks. Honestly, yeah. it's pretty cardboard color to me. So we will we'll keep this color. Color looks like it'll do nice. Cardboard. So we're gonna do this one. Across though, because it'll be easy to go across and all the way up and down. Something is going on in one of my discords. I'm gonna finish this little line right here and I need to check that. Oh, people being stupid. Never mind. I don't give a shit. Not my problem. Okay, so yeah, this uh, this cardboard color uh, works nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and use it. Oh shoot! I gotta go sideways again. Make a line right there. Another cardboard box done. And we need to do this bottom cardboard box down here. Also.
The cardboard box done. Uh, all this white space is going to be actually black. What I need to do first is these thick lines across here are all black, and then I need to figure out um, a background color. Most of it is actually grayscale colored, but I don't know if I want to do more gray in this picture than there already is. Like, there's plenty of freaking gray already. I tell ya, tell ya, tell ya. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Alright, little part right there. Got one part of her hair. Give me a second. Where's the color I used for that? The eye color I used. I know I didn't put you back. Where are you? Fruit pink. There it is. Just one little part of her hair right there. One more black line. Now, we do the background color, which is gray, but I don't want it to gray. <laughs> Everything's so grayscale. I could do a dark gray. I really could, actually. A dark gray wouldn't be horrible. Um, a warm dark gray. Yeah, yeah, like a WG-4 might work. No, we'll do a WG-4. Why not? It is a warm gray color. We'll see how it looks down here. It's not bad. It's not, I don't think that's bad, actually. That, that, that seems to, to look fine.
That actually looks nice. I kind of like that, actually. Yeah. Okay, I don't need the prompt pickup anymore, because I know what all this looks like. So, who is still streaming? I want to make sure people I want to rate soon are still streaming. Someone is that I want to rate. I just want to make sure. Okay, and all the rest of this is this uh, brown color, then. So, let's, let's get all that done. Liking this. This is like one of my only like full color ones. I think I have maybe three other full color drawings. No, I've got four. I've got four. Um, three of them were with Sharpie, and then I think one other one was. Uh, I think I used oil pastels for it. With some Sharpie. I did those ones back in uh, high school. Yeah, that's, that's why I like only knew like Sharpies were like great colors and stuff before I realized they were alcohol markers and stuff like that, which were 10 million times better than uh, just using normal Sharpies at the time because your lines and your color would look much cleaner. They would blend much better than what Sharpie could do. Don't get me wrong, Sharpie's good and all, but... You know, once you get into this other stuff, it might be more expensive, but, like, obviously you pay for quality, and Sharpies are really expensive, and I could, see, for, I got 120 of these uh, alcohol markers for, like, $60. I could get 120 Sharpies for, like, 100 plus more and going up and up. I'm just like, why would I spend that much when I can spend this little, and I can have just, just as good as an output as anything? Which is, uh, why I chose them. Like, I would love to go with, like, actual, like, name brand, like, literal Copic marker and the Touch brand. But they're very expensive. Are they great quality? Yes. Yes, they are. But I have this brand of, uh, you know, I can't remember. Sanjoki brand. Sanjoki, there we go. There we go, yeah. Yeah, I like them. They're, they're really nice. They're on the cheap brand for if you're looking for alcohol-based markers. And they, they do a good job. There's nothing wrong with them at all. You get 120 of them for $60. And it comes with a color palette. So you put each of the colors onto the palette. So then you don't have to always look at it and be like, Wow, I wonder what this color actually looks like on paper. You have it on paper already. So you're always ready to tell what the color will look like. It's nice they come in their own carrying case and everything. You get like a little notepad of paper for it also. It's it's really nice. I held the marker bled a little bit on that last one. I held it there for a bit too long. Trying to get that part done there. Oh, there's another portion done. I'm getting there. <laughs> Portions just are really, really big. Alright. Almost done. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. I'm loving it. This is 
where it gets a little trickier is trying to keep everything in line and keep the color from overlapping itself too much. Another section done. One section left. We're almost done. We're almost fucking done. Oh. Oh. We're almost there. Almost there. Last stretch.
There it is. It's finished. Oh my god. This is amazing. Almost three hours. Oh, my brain is so dead. Let's go raid somebody. Oh my gosh. That was crazy. Holy hell. We're gonna go raid. Welcome to the tea club. They're an artist, VNG VTuber. Love them. Okay. <laughs>